All right, my fellow students, today we are going to go over four literary terms, atmosphere, tone, mood, and foreshadowing. So let's begin. First, we're going to start with atmosphere. Simply put, atmosphere refers to the feeling the reader gets about the story. This is based on the details the author uses. So, how is it created? Well, very simple. It is by the description of characters well, actually, rather not characters. We're not there yet. Sorry. Description of background. There we go. And settings. That's very important. The setting of the story helps create the atmosphere. Is also sometimes by the description of characters and events. But mainly, this is where you would see it, through the background and setting. Alright. Now, this is the feeling the author wants to re the reader to pick up subconsciously. So, it is created via two ways. Through word choice. And sentence structure. And... Through, through the actions of the characters, or actions. But typically you'd find word choice or sentence structure. So this is the most important one that we are going to be looking at when it comes to our examples. In fact, let's look at two of those examples. The first one, let me uh, put the photo. Now, balanced easily and firmly, he stood on the ledge outside in the slight chill breeze, 11 stories above the street, staring into his own lighted apartment, odd and different seeming now. On the left side of his face pressed against the rough cold brick, his lighted apartment was suddenly gone, and it was much darker out here than he had thought. So this is actually a juxtaposition of two parts of the story, but it's used for this example. Notice the imagery used to describe the setting. He stood on the ledge outside in the slight, chill breeze, 11 stories above the street. So that's describing the setting right there. And then this contrasts with the lighted apartment and the fact that it is darker outside than it is inside. So this gives off an atmosphere, a feeling of anxiety, fear, and even sadness. Now, for example, number two. First his right hand, then his left. He carefully shifted his finger-type grip from the pitiless window edging to an indented row of bricks directly to his right. It was hard to take the first shuffling sideways step, then to make himself move, and the fear stirred in his stomach, but he did it, again, by not allowing himself time to think. And now, with his chest, stomach, and the left side of his face pressed against the rough cold brick, his lighted apartment was suddenly gone, and it was much darker out here than he had thought. This time around, the sentences vary so you notice that they go from pretty big, we have ones that have multiple commas in it, to a shorter one at the end, right over here. So this uh, gives an atmosphere of anx anxiousness. So everything is sudden and fearful. So notice everything's moving fast. So it's moving fast, sudden. So that le gives you a feeling of anxiety again gives you that feeling of fear. So, um, he, uh, these short sentences help you, these sentence structure, the varied sentences, help you realize that the atmosphere has changed or that it is turning into something else. So when writing this, you need to keep these hints about atmosphere in mind. First of all, do you want a safe and happy atmosphere? Then that's very easy. Use words 
that have happy, positive connotations. So positive connotations. Fear or sadness. Use words with negative connotations. All right, hint number two. Want to speed things up? Stick to using fewer subjects and lots of verbs. And with less punctuation, that will add to the sense of quickness. For example, and I'm just reading this right now. John leaped through the doors, wondering where the bomb could be, searching quickly with his eyes. Spotting it, he dived to its location, landing on a somersault so he could get underneath it. As you see from that, he's uh, going over and doing a lot of things all at once, so it gives that idea of speed. Notice there's a little detail in that. You're really just describing the actions. All right, number three. Here's just a helpful hint. Verbs that end... In ing equals happening right now. It's happening right now. It makes the reader think it's happening right now. Whereas if it ends with ed, that means it's in the past. Now, atmosphere is very different from the tone of a literary work. So that's what we're going to move into now. Tone refers to how the author, narrator, whichever it is, feels about the topic of the literary work. While tone works in stories, you'll see it better when reading essays or poetry, where the writer tries to purposely make the reader feel interested in the topic. Now, tone can be humorous, serious, sad, angry, excited, pretty much any emotion. And that's the tone that could be be used for the tone of any story or any subject. So, how do you figure this out? Very simply, just need to ask yourself this question. How does the author feel about the topic being addressed? Simple as that. Tone is typically carried through phrasing and use of figurative language, which we're going to cover in the next video. Now, just real quick, what about mood? I mentioned we're going to talk about that. Well, guess what? Here's the important thing you need to know about mood. And all it is, mood equals atmosphere yes these two words are interchangeable you will see both of them on your tests and in your reading but they mean essentially the same thing so no worries there alright finally we're gonna do foreshadowing real quick it's a literary device so that's important that's an important term it's a literary device and it refers to the use of words or phrases that hints at something that will happen at some at at blah, blah, I'm sorry hints at something that will happen Very, very, very simple stuff right here. Um, without revealing, and they do this without revealing the story or spoiling the suspense. Now, depending on your level of reading, you may not notice this device until your second or third read through. While glancing over the story tonight or Friday night, because you will have to reread it on your own, 
try and spot the use of foreshadowing within contents of a dead man's pocket. But just in case you're having confusions with this, I'm going to give you a couple of examples to look at when you're rereading this story. Uh, first of all, notice when Tom feels guilty. over ditching his wife, leaving her so he can do work. So when he feels guilty about staying home, that's foreshadowing events that are going to happen later on, especially with how he learns his lesson. Number two, when the window was stuck. Notice that it was hard to open. That foreshadows what happens later on, especially, you know, when the window gets shut on him. Finally, when the paper flew out the window, and Tom mentions how important it was. That gives you a hint that, yep, he's definitely going to go out there and risk his life to get it. Now, when you find these on your own, underline them so you can take note of the word choice the author uses for foreshadowing. In conclusion, atmosphere or mood refers to the feeling the reader gets about the story. So mood and atmosphere, it's what the reader feels. Tone is what the narrator author feels. And foreshadowing is a literary device that refers to the use of words or phrases that hint at what's to come. So you'll need these three concepts for tomorrow. We're going to start our uh, questions over this story before we do our main writing. Thank you for listening.